Hey, welcome back. And for all you new folks out there, I'm Mr. Muds, uh, VA5MUD in the ham radio world. And today's show, I'm going to be telling you about all these great little connectors here. Yeah, there's a lot of videos on the internet about these connectors. And uh, you know what? Go and watch them. But if you want to see what I have to tell you, it's going to relate to ham radio, off-grid, kind of preparing kind of thing. What connectors work for me? and which ones would hopefully work for you. And which ones do you think you are better than these? Which ones have I missed? And I would like you to drop a line, say in the comments, this is what I think. Because, you know what, I'm not a know-it-all. I know a couple know-it-alls and I just can't stand those people that think they know it all and they could tell you about a lot about something and know a lot about nothing. I don't want to be that guy. I want to tell you what I know and that's it. You drop a line in the comment and you tell me what you need to know, all right? and. Before you lose me here, you guys, please like and subscribe so that when you flip away, you can come back to me and say, hey, that guy actually had something that I was interested in, right? So, hey, let's get started on this. There's a lot of connectors here on the table, and I kind of want to, I'm going get to uh, get to some of the basic things, right? Um, right at the beginning here, I'm going to start with the crappiest connector known to man. Well, it's actually not the crappiest. They are the spade connectors, the crimps. I got a whole pile of them. I use them all the time. I used to use them incorrectly, and I'm gonna get to that right away, why these guys are good and they are bad. Now, first off, the good thing about these kind of connectors. Now, the spade connector, crimp, very easy. You get any kind of cheap crimping tool, or if you start using them a lot, you'll start using a better tool like the one I have with different dies for the different types of crimps. I could do a million view video on crimping, but somebody already did it, so I'm not going to do it. So you go crimp, all that kind of stuff. They're cheap, inexpensive, and they're very easy to get. Okay, you could go to a gas station, you could go anywhere, you'll find these guys, right? So they're good, but they're not good to be used over and over as a disconnect, okay? As a disconnect... There's a world out there waiting to be explored. But true freedom requires a different kind of power. Power that's reliable, sustainable, and built to keep up with your adventurous spirit. Watt Cycle provides strong and stable power. It's a really good deal. These are great little batteries. They have high temperature, low temperature sensors. Really high quality cells come in these things now. So far, so good. Everything seems to be efficient. Well, it did everything that it said it would do. Watt Cycle's lithium iron phosphate batteries utilize advanced battery management and thermal control technologies to ensure exceptional performance and reliability. We only use premium grade A cells, selected for their high energy density, superior safety, an impressive cycle life of up to 15,000 charges. Watt Cycle is proud to serve over 300,000 customers, empowering homes, businesses, and communities around the world with sustainable energy solutions. Our batteries are engineered to provide clean, efficient power for your renewable energy systems. Watt Cycle versatile power solutions for every adventure. Experience freedom on the road. Stay out on the water longer. Hit the greens with confidence. Secure your home's energy needs. Maximize your solar potential and more. Watt Cycle Power Infinite. Disconnect. Okay, as a disconnect, what I mean is let's take this beautiful Watt Cycle battery right here, right on the top here. A lot of my ham friends and off grid living guys use these ones, and what they do is they go out and they constantly put the battery terminal on here. Let's get that in the picture. They put it on here, and when they're all done, they pack up, they take them off, and they do that. Now that is absolutely the worst thing you could do. These are not rated to be taken on and off. Why? Because they lose their ability to grab good. And what they'll do is once they start getting a little bit of a uh, non-friction on them, they start to get overheated. When they start overheating, your voltage is a vo there's a voltage drop. A voltage drop means very much you're in the crap house. You're not, it's not going to work for you. It is not the way to do it. So, you guys, please don't use these as connectors all the time. It sucks. Get yourself a better method. And the better method is we're going to jump ahead right on the line here. Everything's getting piled up here. We're going to go straight to 
the good old power pull. Now, the power pull, some people love them, some people hate them, some people think you're stupid for spending so much money on these things. Now, the authentic ones are the ones to get. They're worth a bit more money, but they're not going to leave you high and dry. They're not going to break down. They're not going to get overheated, all that kind of stuff. I got a great video in the top corner somewhere up there. Click on the link or in the description. You'll see how I do them without the tool. With the tool, I tell you guys, it's a million times better with the tool. Absolutely beautiful crimps, but you can solder them if you don't have it. Have the tool. Get yourself, make yourself up one of these things here. Boom, boom. You got yourself a power pole connection. The power pole connection, the PP15, 30 and 45, as their name says, that's your amperage rating. They also have the giant PP, and I'm not sure how powerful or how much current this PP is rated for, but this PP, power pole. Guys, get out, get out of the gutter, get out of the gutter. PP stands for power pole, right? Not the other thing. This guy is rated for, I think, 100 amps. Now, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. It might be 125. Says on there somewhere, but I can't see. So, these are the ones you need to use for charging your batteries, okay? These tiny little PPs can't handle it. They're going to basically get heated up. Even though they're rated for 45 amps, if I'm pushing 20 amps through this for five hours, let's charge, say I'm juicing up my 300 amp hour watt cycle battery, putting the juice to it, it's taking like five hours or so at 20 amps or whatever, 10 hours, you know, do the calculations. This little guy gets heated up. So you guys, if you're going to be doing some serious charging stuff, toss it, make yourself up some of this stuff. It's going to give you a lot more reliability and your little PP is not going to get all soft and not connect anymore, right? So a little fun fact on these guys, 15, 30, and 45s, they're rated for 10,000 no load cycles. Now, as I'm saying, no load, absolutely nothing on your PP. Just completely just let it, just let it like unplug it, and that's it, right? I'm sorry, I'm not going to say PP anymore. That's it. I said it about 30 times. We're done. Okay. Um, interesting fact if there's a load on one of these connectors, you only get about 250 cycles on it until it fatigues and it doesn't connect. So, if you guys are wondering why your power pole is not really working like it should or it's all black and you know burnt looking probably unplugging it during a load guys undo the load that's going to make them last all right so that's that connector right there rewinding it back over this way a little bit uh yeah that way right there right there okay these are the xt60 now the xt60 is just the common one like this h on it gives you this Find a little tiny connector cover, makes them look beautiful, right? These are starting to get used in a lot of the juice boxes, solar generators, all that kind of stuff, chargers. I actually have one on my 3D printer as a power supply. These guys are rated for about 30 amps, maybe 60, sometimes a little surges, right? Until they get all melted and turn into a McDonald's plastic straw, when we used to have plastic straws in Canada. Um, typically, 12 gauge on them, you know. They're, 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 a good, they're a good value connector, and you'll need them when you start getting into these juice boxes and stuff. Um, I haven't really used them before. They weren't part of my setup. They're not actually even on my Go uh, power boxes, but I'm starting to make adapters from a power pull to, to the XT60s. So there they are. A little trick and hack before we go to the final solar connector is I got myself, you'll see this guy right here, See, what is that you're saying, right? Well, I got really frustrated with always trying to put the wires into these little connectors. And that goes with all the solar uh, uh, controllers. You know, they got the terminal screws where you have to get the screwdriver and you got yourself, you know, you put your screw in there and you got to, you got to attempt to get that wire in there that may be uh, over a gauge. And then, then uh, you're turning it out and you sometimes, oh, shit, I dropped the, the screw. And seriously, I did drop the, I did drop the screw into a bag of a bunch of crap. So I, I, I honestly lost this screw. Okay, so that is kind of a kind of a pain in the butt uh, on anything. 
So what I have done is I've soldered on, and there's a little how-to in the corner there you guys could watch. Um, I basically soldered these little 12-gauge uh, uh, copper on there, and that allows you to slip it in there, tighten it down, and that gives you, on this side it's already done, a connector that's on there. And you can do that with the power poles, uh, just about anything. Uh, it works really great, so if you're going to take anything from this video, that's one thing I want you guys to watch. It's a great little hack, all right? So finally, we got ourselves the MC4s. Now, the MC4s right over here. The great thing about them is they are rated, they're waterproof. They're IP67. IP67 is a standard, you know, it's tested, it's true. If you get authentic ones, the knockoff ones can't be guaranteed they're going to be waterproof. So you guys look out for the real connectors. I honestly don't know the difference. I don't use them too much, and I don't use them on a permanent permanent installation. They're basically just my uh, my connection point to my solar panels, and then I usually go into uh, a power pole or something like that to run out in the field. There is instructions on how to do them. There's a special tool for them. You got to make sure you do it right. I've done a few of them with the cramp tool and did a couple of them with the solder. You guys make sure they're done properly or they could catch fire, all right? So that's one thing you gotta do. Uh, they have the little compression sleeve and then make some waterproof. Great connector. Please use them if you can. Don't cut them off and put on something else. Keep the integrity of your solar panel together and, and use them. They're worth having on there and they plug in and out. I don't have a rating how many times you could unplug them and unplug them, but most likely don't do them under load like any other connection. You don't want to be unplugging your stove in your house while you're cooking a turkey, right? It might not be good. So there we have it. We have everything in here covered as my go-to in the field. If you guys have anything else that you use and want to share with us, please drop a line below. Go visit me on my website. It's www.mrmuds.com. Also my web page and my email is va5mud at mrmuds.com i'd like to hear what you guys have to say and please again if you haven't already please like and subscribe put a thumbs up put that ring that little bell for a notification for for the next crap video i put out they're not all crap but some of them you might be but hey thanks again for watching see you guys around and we'll see you at the next one 73s